Okay, I'm Marie Pilachowski, this is Rami Elia Zaraski. We're in Mitzpe Yericho, and we are about to start, well, we've already started the Shemitah year, and now we have a couple of questions, practical questions, about what we can do. Here is my lemon tree and my clementina tree. And these are, uh, these are trees that have started to grow before Shemitah, and I just don't know what to do with them. I'm not sure what's allowed. So I asked everybody else to ask you to come on over and to teach me what exactly I'm allowed to do in the Shemitah year with my tree. Can I water this tree? If I have, which I do, an automatic watering system that was set before the Shemitah year, can it keep going? Am I allowed to pick the fruit from this tree? Do I have to treat it with Kedusha Shvit? Can I sell my property to somebody else and then be able to do whatever I want? Rabbi, please tell us. Okay, thanks for, uh, for having me here. Um, the first thing I'll mention very quickly is that we have the, the zchut, the, the merit, and the privilege of living here in Eretz Yisrael and being able to keep Shemitah with growing, growing trees in a way that Jews have not had for 2,000 years. And Rav Yosef Tzviri Mon, in his, his book about Shemitah, he points out this is a tremendous, tremendous zchut um, that we have, that the questions, the halakha questions that are coming up that, that Uri's asking us today are questions that Jews, Jews were not able to grow in Eretz Yisrael for many, many years, even when they lived here, that these questions did not, did not rise up for, for so many years that we have the privilege of dealing with now. So before we start answering them, just important to keep in mind that this is a tremendous, tremendous opportunity um, to be able to keep Shemitah here in Eretz Yisrael on our own land and with our own trees. With that, um, we'll begin with the, with the first part of uh, Uri's question. Of Uri's question. Um, in terms of watering, so we know that the, the rule is during Shemitah that you're not allowed to plant and you're not allowed to take care of your garden during, during Shemitah. The question is, if you don't water your tree, your tree will die. So there's a range of different opinions about exactly how much you're allowed to water your tree during Shemitah. However, everybody agrees you're allowed to water it at least minimally to make sure that the tree does not die. So in this particular case, um, again, the apparent opinions vary, but what most, most post games seem to hold on a practical level today is the following. They say that, that every area, number one, every area, area in Eretz Yisrael has a slightly different um, climate in terms of how much water is necessary and also what type of tree you're dealing with. Some trees need more water than other trees. I think citrus fruits in general need more. So the first thing to do in Eretz Yisrael is to speak to a gardener who's familiar with the climate and familiar with the tree. In general, what they say is that usually you have to water significantly less than normal, maybe about half to two thirds of how much you normally water. So let's say if you normally water your tree three to four times a week, so during Shemitah, maybe you would water about two times during the week. Again, to discuss with your gardener. That being said, the point is that, again, you don't want the tree to die, and the halacha allows you to water so the tree doesn't die, but you can't water as much as necessary. So what the post can usually say is, is the following. You can water, let's say, twice a week, for example. Mitzpah Yerich is a little bit hotter, a little bit drier than other places, maybe even a little more than that. Um, but what you can do is if you're watering, in, uh, let's say, with a system like this, you can see the, the, the sprinkler system here, the, the hose that goes in. If you just put it in and turn it on, so what you can do is water, let's say, you're twice, twice a week, or however many times a week that you're doing, a little less than usual. But at the same time, once it's already on, you're not obligated to turn it off. Meaning that, let's say normally you water four times a week, now you water twice a week, but if you normally water for, let's say, 40 minutes, uh, sorry, for, for 30 minutes, so during Shemitah, many posts can hold you can water for 45 minutes. So that way, it's not gonna die and you're able to get as much water as it needs, but maybe, um, maybe not, in the normal, not in the normal way. So that's part one. Number two, Uri asked about uh, a timer system. Let's say you set a timer on your watering system before Shemitah. So can you do that in water normally? And the answer is, as everything else, is, is a machloket. It's a dispute among the poskim, the Jewish decisors of the law, but many poskim say, including Rav Rimon and many others say, that because you're dealing with something which you didn't do during Shemitah, during Shemitah you're not allowed to plant, you're not allowed to do a lot of other gardening activities. But in this case, your watering is not happening during Shemitah itself. All you did was set the timer before Shemitah began. So if you did that, so then many posts can say that you can actually set it to go normally. So if you normally water four times a week for however many minutes, you'd be allowed, according to this, to do that also before Shemitah and let it run for the whole year. However, the only caveat is that during the winter time, in many places, it rains a lot. Now, here in Mitzvah Yericho, it doesn't rain quite as much, but here also, hopefully, we hope it's going to rain. So what's going to happen is if you don't change your timer is that you're going to end up using a lot of water during the winter time when it's also raining, and you also have your timer with your sprinkler system running. So if that doesn't bother you for any reason, then that's perfectly fine according to many postgame, no problem. For those that don't want to do that and they would prefer 
to turn off their timer system during the winter when not as much watering is necessary. So then you have a question if you want to turn it back on later. And that's another machloket in the post game, whether you're allowed to do that or not. Um, some people say that it's better not to do that. And if you're going to turn it on afterwards, you should follow the rules I mentioned before, which is basically cut it down for less times per week, maybe a little more time for each, each watering session, but you'd have to follow the regular rules for Shemitah. Others say, well, no, if you set the system again on a timer like you did before, so you can set it once again to do it normally. And Rabbi Mon suggests in this case, because it's not so clear, maybe it's better to get a non-Jew to do that for you. So that's in terms of the watering. Let's go on to the next question. How about picking the fruits? Am I allowed to go ahead and pick these fruits during Shemitah? Okay, so... In terms of this point, the answer is absolutely yes. You're allowed to pick fruits during Shemitah. However, there are some rules in terms of how you pick that are important to be aware of, not so much on, uh, for us, but more for, for a farmer. Um, during Shemitah, you can't, you can't pick fruits and, and use them in a commercial way, meaning if you're gonna harvest your whole crop and use them commercially and sell them, so that is problematic because the fruits have what's called Kedushat Shvit. They have special holiness, they're special, they're holy, um, when, they're, when, they, when they grow during Shemitah. And we'll come back to exactly which fruits in just a minute. Um, but basically, the idea is the following, that if you pick them one by one or a couple at a time, not too many, to the same way that anybody would go to a tree that wasn't theirs and pick a couple fruits in the field. So that's halakhali permissible. However, what has to be remembered is that the fruits have Kedushat Shvit, meaning, as we said before, they have a special holiness to them. Because they grew in Eretz Yisrael during Shemitah, those fruits are holy and they cannot be eaten in a normal way. The details we're not going to get into right now, but the essential rule is that because they're holy, you can't just throw it out. If you eat half a fruit and then you say, I'm finished, I'll toss it in the garbage. That's not allowed with Kedushat Shvit. What you need to do is to wrap it up and put it in a special little container called a pach, and in that container, it has to stay until the fruit is not edible anymore. It sometimes takes a couple days. And after that point, you can throw out it normally. Um, that's essentially the rule for Kedushat Shvit. Now, if you ask which, which fruits are included in Kedushat Shvit, so that's also a question. Not every fruit on this tree is going to be Kedushat Shvit. The way the Kedushat Shvit works in very, very, very short um, is as follows. Any fruit, if you look at the tree, any fruit which is already largely grown, more than different opinions in the poskim, um, but, but most poskim agree, bottom line, that if they're more than one third grown, um, then already before Shemitah begins, then they would not be subject to Kedushat Shvit. So if you look at, let's say, if you want to take a look at some of these fruits here, so let's say this big one over here and some of the other ones over here. Some of them are already largely grown and there's a good chance certainly this big one and maybe even some of the other ones here that you can see um, are going to be ones that are already considered to be grown from the year before. Meaning Shemitah just started last week. If they're already largely grown, more than a third grown, so then the halachas, they do not have Kedushan Shvi, you can, um, you can pick them uh, and eat them normally. The ones that are much smaller, for example, if you want to take a look on this side, there are some that are much, much smaller. Um, if you look over here, you can see this one, this one is much smaller, and that one, there's a good chance that one is not yet one, one third growth of its final size. So in terms of, let's say, ones like that, or ones that are very, very small, so those fruits actually, because most of the growth takes place during Shemitah, so then the halacha would be that it does have Kedushat Shvit and it follows all the rules that we mentioned before, that you have to pick it just a couple at a time and you have to eat it and not throw away, either eat the whole thing or not throw away the parts that, are, uh, that you don't want to eat, just let it lie, let, put it in your pot and leave it there for a couple of days. That's great. Thank you very much. That's a, okay. a great uh, explanation as to what we can do practically on our, on our gardens. If you have any questions, so feel free to be in touch and we'll try to get answers for you. Okay, Shabbat Shalom, as in Shabbat Shemitah Shalom. Shalom. Okay, we're on uh, looking at a, a plant here. This is a, in a pot sitting on my windowsill here at Mitzvah Bericho, and I have Rabbi Ozerowski with me, and I'm Marie Pilchowski, and we are looking at the laws of Shemitah and what we can do with this pot. Now, this pot happens to have holes in it, which is going to be a big question I'm going to have for Rabbi Ozerowski. But we've got basil growing here and nana in dirt in a pot. Shemitah wise, I would think that, well, look, this isn't in the ground. Is this really an issue? But it's not so simple. And that's why I asked Rabbi Ozerowski, what can I do with this plant? Can I water it? Do I have to let it die? Can I pick off the leaves to use them and eat them? What's the halacha? Okay. So the first thing is maybe we'll translate nana in English. For those who don't know, I believe nana is usually, is usually mint, mint, right? Mint leaves. Right. Okay. Um, in Hebrew, everybody just calls it nana. So these plants are, these potted plants are a little bit complicated in terms of the halakha. As we mentioned, 
Um, you might think that if it's not growing in the ground, Shemitah doesn't apply to it, and the answer is that's not necessarily the case. So the first thing to, to realize when it comes to these types of, of, uh, of potted plants is the following. Everybody agrees across the board that if there are holes in the bottom, and I don't know if you can see the holes in the video here, I don't think you can see them, but, um, but everybody agrees that if there are holes in the bottom that are a certain size, and most of the places that the, the plants grow that have holes, most of the holes are big enough to be included, the halachas, they're actually considered to be considered, uh, they're considered connected to the ground, meaning that even though this plant is up on the windowsill, but the halacha treats it as if there's a halachic virtual connection to the ground below, even if it's tiles. The point is that since there is dirt somewhere on the ground around here, the halacha is that, it, that it's connected. So when it comes to Shemitah, what that means is as follows. Um, it means that this would be treated halachically equivalent to if the plant was actually growing in the ground. So the same way we saw um, there are other trees here, we, have, we mentioned the lemon tree, um, trees like that are not allowed to be, um, to be taken care of during Shemitah other than things that will cause, if, if the tree would die otherwise. Um, and we mentioned that, that you're not allowed to water the tree in the normal way. So in most cases of these potted plants, the same rules will apply. That in terms of watering, you can't water however, however much you want. You have to water based on the regular rules of Shemitah, which would mean if it normally needs, let's say, three times a week, so you cut it down to one or two times a week for, again, however much time is necessary, you would be allowed to do, according to many opinions. But you can't water it as, as much as normal. You'd have to water to, to the bare, to the closer to the bare minimum. Now, um, there are some other things to, to be aware of here. In terms of watering, um, there are some cases where, according to some opinions, it might be permitted to water, water it normally. In this particular case, because there's a roof on top of the windowsill, so many posts can say if there's a roof that's there, so then halakhli it's considered to be as if it's growing inside. Now others disagree, others say that that's not necessarily the case, there has to be a wall, it has to be, let's say, a, a wall of about 100 centimeters, or 80 to 100 centimeters high over here. But some posts can say even if there's just a roof on top, then halakhli that's treated as if it was inside. And if you have a pot of plant inside the house, so then already some posts can say that's different. The whole question of planting and watering all those things for Shemitah is outside. But if it's inside, some posts can say it's not included, you can water normally. So in this case, one could argue that maybe because of the, the roof of the window cell here, maybe you would be allowed to water it normally. However, because as we mentioned before, there are holes in the bottom, so the posts can generally say if there are holes in the bottom that that would not work. The only case that would work, again, without getting into too many details here, is if you have a roof on top, and there is no holes on the bottom, and let's say you put, or you put, let's say, um, a plate of some sort, either, not a ceramic plate, but some other type of plate underneath here that would block the roots from coming out um, to go any farther than that. Um, or, uh, and one other point, in this case we don't have it, but if, let's say, all the parts of the plant don't come out, they stay inside here. So if you have the combination of those things together, so then, some posts can say that in that case you would be allowed to water normally, but because it doesn't always happen and because the rules are a little bit complex, the generally accepted halachic guideline is not to water these types of plants if they're outside um, in a normal way, but rather to water, water them less. Again, as if they're inside, so many posts can say if it's inside and you have a plate underneath, uh, many posts can say you can water that normally, but again, there are different opinions, so, um, so we, we won't go into details right now. Um, the other point that, that we asked about that we'll, we'll discuss is the question about, uh, about eating them. So these plants, as you mentioned, are basil and, and mint. Um, those are generally used for spices, am I correct? Yeah, I put them in, you could put them in tea and drink them. Okay, right, so that's part of the question. Do these plants have Kedushat Shvit? Now if they have Kedushat Shvit, so then that's going to be the same status as a fruit, which means if you pick it, so then halakhically it might be subject to Kedushat Shvit. You have to then dispose of it only in the normal, in, in, in the special way. You can't just let it, throw it in the garbage or pour it out in the sink. You'd have to basically um, save it in a way before it, before it uh, spoils or before it rots. So in this particular case, um, what the post can say is that if it's going to be used for food, meaning if you're going to take the, let's say, the mint and put it in your tea, so then the halacha would be that it's actually considered um, kedushat shvit. If it would be used for other purposes, not for food, so then you would be allowed to pick it, but there, it would not necessarily have kedushat shvit. Again, that's different than a fruit because a fruit is generally assumed to be used for food, even if you don't. That's separate. But this type of thing, because spices are not always only used for, for food, if they're used in that way, even just for flavoring, then they, the status is they have kedushat shvit. As opposed to a fruit, the status of, um, the status of these types of things is that 
uh, they're more considered to be like uh, like vegetables, in which case it depends on when you pick them. Meaning if you pick it during the Shemitah year, and then you want to use it for your tea or for some other type of flavoring like that in food, so then the halach would be that it does have Kiddushat Shemit, and then it means that your tea or your other drink that you put it in also has Kiddushat Shemit, which means you should drink the whole thing up, and if you don't drink the whole thing up, you have to make sure to leave it out uh, until it is not good anymore. A couple days later, and then you can take it normally, or you can pour it in a bag. If you pour it in, let's say, one or two bags and keep it from spilling out, then maybe also um, you, can, uh, you, can, you can get rid of it afterwards. That's it. Okay. okay. Rabbi, thank you very, very much for your help, and this is great. Okay. And you should have a uh, Shabbat Shalom, as in a Shemitah Shabbat Shalom.